What's up guys, Chris from One More Cast. So if you was to have gone back and watch any of my earlier videos, probably about five or six months ago, I used to do a tackle talk after every video that I did. And the reason I did that was because watching someone catch the fish is fun. I mean, that's where all the action is. You wanna watch a video, you wanna see people catch a fish, but at the same time, myself personally, and I know a few other people, they like to get information from those videos also not just show off all the fish that they've caught. So I started to do the tackle talks and I enjoyed doing them. And also say there was someone that moved from, let's say New York, moved down to Florida and they bought themselves a kayak. They didn't know, you know where to begin. I liked going over all the tackle I used in that video to show them how to rig it, you know, what weight I was using, why I was using that weight. I feel like that was a lot of information that someone that wasn't from here or someone that was just beginning to inshore fish I feel like that was the information that they could have used so I've been thinking a lot lately and I really want to start doing some kind of tackle talk or some kind of informational video that's not on the water that's just me you know in my tent that's where I keep all my you know my boats and stuff like that my kayaks but I wanted to do something that was just me talking about the tackle and stuff like that well my last video I just posted was um, the reason I did that video was because someone made a comment about that you know they've they've been fishing all they catch is catfish so I want to do one with shrimp to try to show that you can catch some stuff other than catfish using shrimp and stuff like that and I hope that you know you guys got a lot from that video I mean just me talking about how I mean if you don't use weight if you just freeline it it looks more natural I figured that would help out a lot so it made me want to come out here out here today and do a video based off someone who has nothing at all they want to get some gear and go inshore artificial fishing i'll do one on live bait eventually but i want to this first video it might be a little bit longer but i want to start on a beginner someone that's like okay i just moved down here i want to start inshore fishing i want to use lures i want to use only artificial that's what this video is about so i want to start doing videos informational videos and tackle videos for people that are just moving down here or someone that just wants to start fishing maybe a, someone that just turned you know 18 19 years old they're out on their own and now they bought themselves a kayak and they want to actually learn how to fish now or something like that okay so as you can see i've got three rod and reel setups i've got a bunch of tackle laid out and all of this tackle is very simple tackle to use and it's stuff that you could go out as a beginner not spend a lot of money and build yourself a little tackle box to take out to the flats with you all right so now you don't have anything you want to start inshore fishing first thing you need to do is get a rod and a reel so there isn't an all-around rod built for everything you can get rods that will do mostly everything but it won't do everything you have rods for finesse you have rods for heavy lures you have different actions of rods but that's for another time because that's it, it goes into a lot more than just a beginner so i'm going to show you good rod and reel that you could get not spend a lot of money as a beginner so this is the first one so this is the one i've used it in the very beginning pretty much this is one of the ones i used i didn't want to spend a lot of money you know i was fresh out of high school and you know <clears throat> didn't have a lot of money to spend so I went to Bass Pro Shop and my brother actually he started out with the pursuit it's a pen pursuit well this one right here is the pen fierce it's red and black most of the time they're red and black the pursuit is usually either blue and black or um, black on silver but this is a fierce 2 2500 actually this is my son's rod rod and reel this is a combo you can buy at Bass Pro Shop it's $89 and I think the 2500 is actually $79. But if you get 3000 or 4000 it's ninety um $89. And this is a really good rod and reel to start out with. If if that's um if you want to stay under a hundred dollars, great setup. I use one. I actually have a Pen Fierce 4000 that's like seven years old. I mean, I've dropped it in the water, I use it for beach fishing, I use it for structure fishing. I have abused this reel and it still is very smooth as long as you take care of it but this comes on a rod a pretty stiff rod and this will work for a lot of a lot of stuff 
I've used this combo before, the same exact combo, and I've caught big redfish, I've caught big snook, I've caught trout. I mean, a lot of it works in the drag also. I mean, you don't want to have your drag locked down and rip the lure out of its mouth, but I mean, this rod and reel setup does good for just starting out. Okay, so this is the next setup that I would recommend. So this is my personal one. It's the Pen Battle 3. They're usually gold and black. Looks kind of like a Daiwa BG. This is the 2500 size. This is a great combo. I love this combo. It's $159.99 at Bass Pro Shop. And I buy the gear guard. Now it comes on this rod. This is the rod it comes on. It's a pre-made combo. A lot of people, um, a lot of professionals, they, they don't really stand by the pre-made combos. And they have every right to. Usually comes on a cheaper rod that, I mean, they're either too too flimsy or too stiff. But this is a good all-around rod setup. I've caught in tarpon, snook, redfish. I've thrown finesse on this. You guys can see right here, I was just fishing with this finesse setup. But this will work. This is a great setup. It's it's lighter, way lighter than the Pen Fierce. That Pen Fierce is pretty heavy, but this one's way lighter. But this is a really good setup to get. Like I said, I get this one at Bass Pro Shop. You can get it at any probably mom top pop um, tackle shop. Really good setup. If you have that little bit of mo extra money that you want to spend, go ahead and go for this one. Okay, so this is another one I have. Now I have two of those Pen Battle um, 2500s. They're great. I love that setup. I'm actually looking at a rod though to, for one of the reels so I can have three different rods. So this is another one. This one my fiance got me. This is a Pen Battle 3, but this is the DX. So what that stands for is dealer exclusive. You won't find this one at Bass Pro Shop. You won't find this one at Dick's. You won't find this one at any big box retailer. You'll only find this at small tackle shops. Um, where I'm from, Fish and Franks, Sportsman Wholesales. Um, I don't think Downtown Bait and Tackle have it. You're only going to find that at the smaller tackle shops around your area also. But <clears throat> so this reel, they sold it paired on this um, rod. Now this isn't just a normal like those ones where it's paired to a pin rod. This is actually on a Fenwick HMG inshore rod. I love this rod. This rod is great. <clears throat> this is the 3000 size though. The other two are 2500s. The only reason I went with the 3000 was because I already have two lighter action rods. I wanted more of a heavier action rod. So the 3000 came with a heavier action rod. They wouldn't let me put the 2500 on this rod. So they had to sell it as is. But this is a great setup. I've actually, this 3000, it's not really much heavier than the 2500. The only difference I, I'm pretty sure is just the spool. But it's a great setup. And I think this one was about 179, 180, somewhere in that area. Okay, so now you picked out your rod. You know which rod you want. Uh, you know which reel you want. I mean, even if you go and find a reel and a rod and pair them together yourself. It all depends on what price point you want to stick at and the more money you spend, the better setup you, you're going to get. If you are going to pair them together, spend more money on the rod than you do the reel. The rod does way more than what the reel does. The reel controls the drag and reels the fish in. That's all it does. The rod sets the hook. The rod fights the fish. The reel doesn't fight the fish. The rod does. Where it bends at in the blank is what you want to know. But that's a video for another time. This is for just someone going getting a rod and reel set up and going fishing. So now you got your rod, you got your reel, whichever one you decide to get, what line are you gonna put on it? If you're inshore fishing, and this isn't for, like I said, this isn't for land fishing. This is for if you have a kayak and you can get to the flats. This is for if you found somewhere where you can park on the side of the road and wade out on a flat and wade down a flat. This is for someone that has a boat. So <clears throat> all I've got on here is 10 pound, Power Pro. You don't need anything more than 15. 15 is the highest. I've got 15 on my 3000. That's only because I will use that around docks sometimes. I will use that around structures sometimes. So I put 15 on it. These ones I have 10, 10 pound on it. The reason you want to go light is casting. You want to be able to cast as far as possible when you're fishing flats. The fish get real finicky when they're in shallow, clear water. So 
you want to stay as far away from the fish as possible and make an accurate cast and you can do that using lighter braid i would not go over 15 pound braid now once you have your braid picked out next is fluorocarbon and that's what you tie to your braid i wouldn't use a swivel at all i will do a video how to tie a line to um your braid to your fluoro down the road but this is just for purchasing what you need if you want to learn or if you want to learn that say you get everything and i haven't done the video yet there's several videos on youtube on how to tie your fluoro to your braid okay so now you got your braid what kind of fluoro do you want to buy i'll show you what i use this brand right here the cigar that's my favorite brand that's what i use i use this inshore edition i like it a lot um it's never really failed me and where if you buy this at bass pro shop dicks a big retailer it's pretty pricey but um sportsman wholesale where i get my stuff from it's actually really cheap they got it marked way down like 30 percent lower than what it is at bass pro shop but <clears throat> there's three sizes that i throw on average so if you just want to buy one and not have to deal with three of them this 25 pound is perfect you can land snook on it i've landed 45 inch tarpon on this i've landed big snook on this i think um the biggest snook i've landed on this is i want to say like 32 inches so i've landed a lot of big fish on this and it's thin enough to where you can still kind of be a little bit in invisible for the trout and the redfish now if you're if you're targeting snook or tarpon i would definitely go with a 30 if you're targeting big tarpon, I'd maybe even go to a 40 pound, but 30 pound is usually the highest I go. The only time I go higher than this is if I'm fishing docks for sheephead and snapper, or and even still, I'll use this for sheephead and snapper sometimes. Um, but the only time I go really higher is if I'm fishing really, really thick structure. I'll go up to like a 40 or a 50 if I'm fishing on the beach and I'm going for, you know, and I'm right around pylons and I have to be able to get it to the beach. But if, usually if I'm waiting or if I'm in my kayak, I don't ever go over 30 pound and what i mainly do is i'll tie on a stretch like this long of this 20 but then i'll tie a blood knot and put a short section of the 30 onto that and that protects me from any snook any tarpon that i might run into all right so you got your rod your reel you got your line and you got your fluoro you're good to go now what kind of baits are you gonna use so i'm going to show you four so four bait profiles three you can call it four bait profiles that are very very simple to use my kids grew up using them that's how simple they are to use even my daughters that are 10 and 7 use one of them all the time so the first one that i use is a paddle tail so these are z-man these are the minnow z three inch these are the diesel minnow Z's, they're four inch. And these are saltwater assassins. And the reason I got these is because usually whenever I go out with my kids, I'll buy a pack of these um, because they'll run through my baits, especially my two daughters with puffer fish and stuff like that. But these are also great baits. I do like these baits. I just prefer the Z-Mans and I'll show you why. Okay, so the reason why I like the Z-Mans over the saltwater assassin, DOA, any other brand really that's made out of the Plastisol or the or traditional soft plastic is say you're reeling it in something grabs the back of it boom rips the tail off these get tore up so easily and that's the reason i prefer the z-mans because the z-mans if they grab it boom the only thing that can tear this bait up is a puffer fish they can definitely take chunks out of it but a puffer fish can tear up any bait i've had a puffer fish bite through a miridine before but that's the reason i prefer the z-mans over this regular soft plastic like doa salt or sesame they're all good bait they all work great the only reason i prefer it is because of the material it's made out of and the durability that's it when it comes to performance besides cold months during the cold when the water gets really cold this will keep the same action that it has during the summer spring months fall months these will stiffen up a little bit and they won't you won't get as much action as you will when the water's warm versus cold but that's the four inch diesel minnow that's the three inch 
Minnow Z. And I'll show you a comparison of, so this is a four inch saltwater sass and a four inch Z-Man diesel minnow. And then this is it compared to the three inch. So this is almost like a 3.75 or a three and a half inch. It's right in between, but it says four inch on the package. So there's two ways I rig a DOA or saltwater assassin or any of those types of baits. And I'll show you. First way is on a twist lock hook. If I want it weedless, and I don't want to get caught up in the grass. I'll put on a twist lock hook, a 3.0 this is the eighth ounce. And I'll show you what the twist lock looks like. Is this what it looks like? You got this little spring thing and all you do is you twist the bait on this and that's what holds it on and it makes it weedless. The second way I like to rig it is on a regular jig head. Now you don't have to use these jig heads. These are I, these are made by iStrike and the reason I like these jig heads and I'll throw these ones on these jig heads just because they work but the reason I like these jig heads is because it has these keepers right here and those are very important to have when it comes to keeping the Z-Mans on the jig head. But depending on the depth, if I'm fishing three feet or less, I use eighth ounce. If I'm fishing three feet or more, I use quarter ounce. Or three sixteenth ounce is a good all around, it'll work a little bit deeper water, it'll work a little bit shallow water. That's a good like, if you just wanna buy one size to go out and fish, a 3 16 ounce is great bait. It is a great size to use. So that's two ways I rig those types of baits. DOAs, saltwater assassins, any kind of bait made out of the original soft plastic, like the most popular stuff. All right, so there's three ways I like to rig the Z-Man paddle tails though. My favorite way, this is hands down, my favorite way to rig this bait. I will, if I can throw it this way, I will throw it this way. There's only certain times I can't, and that's when we have that really stringy hair-like grass floating through the water because it just gets caught all over, not even this, it gets caught over my knots, everything. But if this is the, so this is the, the Texas Eye. It's made by Eye Strike, and it's got this really nice keeper right here that holds this bait on. It will not come off at all, no matter how hard you try. If you rig, try to rig, one of these on there it's going to tear up after two fish so because the material it's made out of it's not made to go on a hook like this whereas these z-mans they're made to flex over this and then go back into place they will reform their shape after after you put it on there and it will actually hold on there all day for multiple trips second way is almost similar the only difference is just a weighted hook there's no jig head on it this is the most weedless way you can throw a paddle tail is on a weighted hook. Now Z-Man has these chin locks hooks that I really like, but I don't have any right now. I actually have some coming in the mail soon. But this is on a Mustad grip pin hook. It's got the same keeper pretty much. The Z-Man one has a better keeper on it, but this still, it works really good. It works very well. But this is the other way. Now if I'm using a 4 inch bait, I'll use a, a, a 3 aught hook will actually work on a 4 inch or a 3 inch. I mean, so if you just want one hook, the 3-0 three, the hook works great. And like I said, I usually, I will, I'll only buy this in an eighth ounce just because if I'm fishing deeper, I'll put it on a jig head. I'll just put it on a quarter ounce jig head. So normally I only buy these in eighth ounce just because I'm only using it like this when I'm fishing shallow. Other than that, I can throw a jig head. The last way that I rig a Z-Man paddle tail is on a traditional jig head. It's exposed. This is going to be your highest hookup ratio just because it's got an exposed hook. These hooks are super sharp and I'll usually, as you can see, I left it on there, but I'll tie a loop knot on there and I'll give it a nice action also, kind of like the Texas eye, but it's an exposed hook. And I'll usually throw this, I'll throw this in two feet of water or deeper. Sometimes I'll go foot, depends on how much grass is on the bottom. But honestly, if you're just going out, first time going out, throw one of these, stick in about two to three feet of water, two to four feet of water, and you'll definitely catch fish on this. Okay, so second bait that I recommend. This one is a little bit more tedious. It's not like a paddle tail where you can just reel it in real slow and they'll hit it because the, on a paddle tail, the tail does all the action. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is reel it slow. You can drag it, you can, bump it 
but the tail does all the action in this one. So this is a very, like, if there's only one bait you want to try, this would be it, is this paddle tail. My daughters are 10 and 7, and they'll throw this on a regular jig head, and they will catch trout, snook, everything. I mean, one after another, and all they're doing is reeling it slow. That's it. So this one is a little bit more complicated, but it's still pretty easy to use. And that is... Um, jerk shads right here so I use 5 inch and I got the 4 inch now these come pre-scented as you can see there's Procure in there so these come pre-scented but these are one of my favorite baits to use especially during high tide or low tide conditions because during high tide con conditions I can rig it away where I can pitch it 2 feet into mangroves or 3 feet into mangroves on low tide it's so weedless that I can just work it through the grass or work it on a really shallow flat. I can also fish these really deep. So my first way that I rig it is on one of those Mustad grip pins or Z-Man chin locks, whichever one you decide to get. But I usually, on the 5 inch, I throw a 4-0 hook on it. I use a 4-0 hook, I'll use an 8th ounce to a 3 6 uh, an 8th ounce to a 16th ounce. Um, just because this uh, it's so buoyant I don't ever throw it weightless I always have at least a 16th ounce on it but 8th ounce is the main way I throw it and I can skip this so far in the mangroves it's it's crazy how far you can skip this it's so weedless and if you hit a mangrove it'll just bounce right out of the tree because it's completely weedless now the other way I rig it is on a regular jig head trout high jig head like I said it's not coming off those keepers keep it in place very well I put a loop knot on it and pretty much same thing two feet to five feet of water I'll throw it on a jig head like this anything more shallow than that I'll throw it on a weighted uh, a weighted hook but if I'm more than three feet three feet plus I'll put it on a quarter ounce jig head other than that I'll keep it on either an eighth or a three sixteenth ounce jig head now the last two baits and these baits are they're similar to the jerk shad but they're hard plastic baits so I'm only showing you this one just so you can see it in the package but the one that I use all the time the one that I'm recommending is different and you'll see what I mean so this one you can see it says heavy Dean right here so this is the bait that I like to use but not the heavy Dean I use the heavy Dean during colder months to get a little bit deeper or in canals stuff like that but it's the MR 17 and this is it I just wanted to show you what it looked like in the packaging, but you see, they look ident identical. The only difference is if, I don't know if you can see it or not, if you can see on there, it says Heavy Dean on it. So this one will sink. This is the MR-18. This one's the MR-17. This one's a suspending. Twitch, and it'll just sit there. Twitch, twitch. That's how you work it. That's it. Twitch, or twitch, twitch. The longer the pause on these, the more odds you're going to have of getting a bite. A lot of trout will hit this during the pause. But this is the MR-17. Hands down, this exact bait, my favorite bait, hard plastic to use. All of my PBs have been caught on this. I have jumped several tarpon on one of these. I have caught my biggest snook on here, which is 37 inches. I've caught my biggest redfish on one of these, 35 inches. My biggest cobia, I caught on this. Caught flounder on this. Jack, ladyfish, mackerel, bluefish. Every fish I can think of, I call on these penfish, pufferfish, needlefish, lizardfish, everything will eat this bait. And now, mind you, I've caught them on different colors. And colors is something we'll get to later on down the road. This is for beginners. This is a good color to get as a beginner. This little green back, and it's got a mirror look on the side. Now, you can grab this bait right out of the package, and it comes with these treble hooks on it. But fishing out of a kayak... I don't like to deal with treble hooks. If you've watched my prior videos, I don't like using treble hooks at all. There's, there's too much room for error with treble hooks. I've almost got hooked before using treble hooks. So I like inline hooks. Another benefit from inline hooks is if you hook into a bigger fish, you have a higher odds of it staying on. They can pull off those treble hooks. I've actually had probably one of the biggest snook I ever hooked, like a 40 inch snook, bend these out, bend these hooks out. They're strong hooks though, so if you're just beginning, 
take this thing right out of the box it'll work great for you just once you start to get a little bit more advanced i'd definitely recommend putting on inline hooks and if you go to mirrorlure.com they actually sell inline hooks for these baits and it'll tell you on the package which inline hooks go to which bait so they kind of help you out there so the other bait is pretty similar just a little bit slimmer this is the mr19 another one of my favorite baits and two or three videos ago whenever i took my boys out cj was killing it on the on this bait right here this bait's great same thing i like to put inline hooks on them this one can go a little bit shallow so this one with the inline hooks i can fit i can fish it from about a foot to three feet of water i wouldn't go any more than that maybe four feet of water if the fish are coming up and it's you know they're, they're coming up and they're hitting bait off the top four feet of water maybe five but i usually like to keep this no deeper than three feet of water every once in a while I'll throw it in deep and work it out of the deep into the shallows but i can throw this pretty shallow though with the inline hooks on it because these don't get caught up in the grass as much with the treble hooks i try to stick about two feet I try not to go less than two feet this one even with the treble hooks on it it's um it doesn't sink as slow so this one can definitely go in about a foot of water with the treble hooks on it great baits though twitch paws twitch twitch paws you figure it out as you go it's it's a learning process and you learn as you go that is one thing that i love about fishing is you're constantly learning the tides change the weather change you go from cloudy skies to bluebird skies i mean you go from hot to cold everything changes so the fish are constantly moving everything's constantly changing so you're constantly having to adjust and learn okay so the last thing that i want to talk to you guys about is scents so the scented jerk chads already come procure in the pack they're already pre-scented but scent is a huge thing to have too so paddle tails they don't come pre-scented so I'll usually i'll put a little bit of procure on it now i know in my older videos my past videos i used a lot of dr juice I did start, you know, I got into that whole salt strong thing. I started watching a lot of their videos, especially when I first got my kayak, because I found a lot of videos on kayaks on salt strong. So I got into that huge mindset of salt strong. So I started kind of going to their ways, the way they do things, stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, they're a great group of guys. They know how to fish. They, they're definitely onto something. And I learned a lot from them. Blood knot. I learned the blood nut from them. That's where I go from 20 and put a little bit of 30 on them. I learned that from them. C.A. Richardson Flats class. I learned a lot from him. Actually, to this day, every time he posts a new video, I watch it because he goes over tackle. And I feel like tackle talks are very important to teach you new things about different baits, new changes you can make to catch more fish and bigger fish. But I feel like you always have to adapt. You have to look at other anglers and other people in your area and learn from them don't just be like oh i know everything you don't know everything you're always going to learn and if you don't have that mindset to constant to constantly change and learn and watch other people and learn from other people you're not going to get anywhere you're going to keep throwing the same bait that you've been throwing for two years and you, you might have a good day every once in a while but then out of 10 days you might have two good days and eight bad days just because you don't want to you don't want to learn from other people I watch a lot of videos of people down south when I first got my kayak and I follow a lot of them and I watch all their videos every week every time they post a new video I watch it because I feel like they're more I don't want to say on my level or we're all on each other's level because we are all the people I watch I can relate to every single one of them and when I did this kayak tournament my uh, very first kayak tournament I met a lot of the guys I watch on YouTube and they're all great guys I watch all their content every time they post a video I watch it because I've learned something from every single one of them. And and I like watching them fish. I like watching them catch fish. I'm su I'm supportive of other anglers catching fish. But yeah, you just got to learn to, you know, learn from other people and then learn a little bit on your own too. Do some of your own research, you know. I'm if I'm not, you know, if I'm when I'm not on the water, I'm not fishing and I have downtime and I really got nothing going on. I'll go on Instagram, I'll scroll through Instagram, look at different baits that are coming out. I'll do research on different baits. I love the tackle side of things. I mean, really second to fishing. I love talking about tackle. I like learning new things about tackle. But I mean, this pro cure is very simple the way I do it. If I'm throwing a jerk shad, shrimp, any kind of crustacean kind of bait, I'll put, put shrimp on it. 
really that simple. A jerk shad, it, it represents either a shrimp or a, you know, a dying bait fish. Paddle tails, miradines, any of those baits that represent a bait fish, I'll put mullet on because they all look like small mullet, like finger mullet. So, I mean, that's really the only two I use. And like I said, I used to use these way before Dr. Juice. I mean, and one thing that that made that I took away from, you know, canceling my membership at Salt Strong and the past three or four videos I've made were just based off of me going back to what I used to do before I started watching the Salt Strong stuff. I used my own apps. I used my own weather channel. I didn't, you know, I didn't have access to their app anymore. So I used my own stuff and all of my PBs I caught before I started the Salt Strong. Procure, I used it before Salt Strong. Miradine, Z-Man, all that I used before the Salt Strong. So, I mean, like I said, I did learn a lot from them, but at the same time, you know, I feel like when I was doing it my way and I was kind of basing off of my knowledge, I feel like I was doing a little bit better because I was able to adapt my own way instead of trying to adapt to one set of roles that they were trying to put in place. I was watching this guy, watching this guy, watching four different YouTube channels that all do things, do it four different ways and take a little bit from all of them. All right guys, so I'm gonna end on that. I know I kind of got carried away there at the end, but I hope you guys like this new type of video that I'm gonna start doing. I hope you guys like these tackle talks. I hope you guys are gonna like the information. Like I said, this is all toward people that are just beginning fishing and they wanna get out there and they wanna try something new. I mean, even people that are already anglers and go fishing every weekend or every week, I hope they can take something and they're like, oh, I never thought of that or oh, yeah, that makes sense because I do that still. I'll watch a video of someone and I'll be like, oh, you know what? That actually makes sense. Let me try that. I'll try it and be like, oh, it works. And I'll take from that and I learn from that. So this isn't just for beginners. This is also for people that already fish and maybe don't use Z-Mans and want to try Z-Mans. I love them. They're indestructible almost. I mean, besides puffer fish, nothing tears it up. And I will leave, I'll leave them, I mean, I'll fish with the same bait for multiple trips and I won't even all I'll have to do is just add scent to it and that's it remember guys to like subscribe hit the bell notification that way you're notified every time I post a new video remember guys there's always time for one more cast I'll see you later